Hi. This is the reading rush tag. So it's a tag and also it's the TBR for reading rush. Yes. Um, it's the stay at home reader sh reading rush. We will link the video that Ariel's done um, in the description so you can join us. Um, everyone should join in. Like, okay. Hey, do you want to ask the questions? Okay. How is your reading going while staying home? Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I've been witness to how it's been going. Yeah. It's taken thoughts? a turn that we did not see coming. Yeah. I, to start with, I was struggling just because it feels, I know, and I know lots of people are saying, it feels like a time when you can, because I do have more time on my hands. It's Obviously, that's not the same for everyone, but it feels like a time when you could read more. And I probably read less. But then also. I've read that much less. No. I've read less quality, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what I have been reading is horror. Um. <laughs> And also Jack Cornfield, so horror and spiritual, hmm. which I feel are kind of in the same area, yeah, really. I mean, I've been not that far off that, I think, myself, but that's yeah. kind of normal for me, I think. Yeah, so yeah. Your, is your reading been kind of usual? I think so. I've been, I've been drawn to, like I said, I've been drawn more into non-fiction than usual, but then that could have just happened anyway. Like, I think I go through phases in my reading, so I haven't really noticed it been affected. I mean, the first couple of weeks of kind of the realisation of how bad things were getting kind of was a bit of a, sort of a shock to me my system and I thought I would struggle to read during that time but my focus came back a bit and now I can focus now I can read as long as but I, I, I seem to need to have lots of books on the go it's because I guess I want to jump from one thing to the other mm. more than usual yeah I think my um concentration is coming back a little bit but I'm still sticking with like yeah kind of horror stuff and I think it's just like plotty stuff isn't it so that um which immediately will grab your attention rather than... I think literally. also that we are just... Um, I think people are, you know, sort of re retreating back to their old selves a bit. And I think for a lot of people, like, they haven't had this much time on their hands since they were teenagers. Um, so I think the fact that people are, you know, like, doing a, disco rediscovering a lot of things that they like to do as teenagers, like reading horror for you, is kind of quite natural. Mm. You know, I think you're sort of just connecting to that part of yourself again that you know was bored a lot of the time and like that's what being a teenager is isn't it you're bored you kind of try and do something creative you sort of can't be bothered with that and then you put it down you start something else and then you sort of read about horror you watch some trashy tv no yeah yeah, yeah. way of looking at mm. it yeah kind of goes into the next question is where have you been reading at home Oh, yeah. I've been reading on, on the bed, really, which kind of remind, makes yeah. me feel kind of quite sort of teenage, that yeah. sort of like, reading on bed. Packet of crisps. Yeah, that used to be my thing, packet of crisps and reading on bed. It's just like, so good. I haven't yeah. got any crisps at the moment. No. Um, and painting my nails mm. as well. Yeah. So that's, yeah. What about you? Where have you been reading? Um, I've been reading mostly, I guess, on and off in the living room, because kind of we've been sort of, if I if Sean's in the bedroom, I'm usually in the living room, either sort of reading or going through old boxes of stuff, which I like to do, or kind of watching films or Dallas. Um, and I read in bed, sort of in the morning and at night. Um, yeah, I don't. I've traditionally not read huge amount through the day anyway, so I'm more of an evening morning reader. I don't think my reading habits have changed that no. much. I do like reading on the bed though; it's nice, isn't it? It does feel kind of like a like a space which yeah. is like quite suited for reading yeah there's less distraction yeah next question Bertie um the best book you've read during isolation Johnny um I'm gonna pick A Lamp in the Darkness by Jack Cornfield which is illuminating the path through difficult times and I read a little bit out of it in um the previous video that we did which I'll link and I've tagged loads of it and I just found that there was loads of little bits that felt really um, particular to now um, and I think it's actually was a really helpful book to read and I really love Jack Cornfield um, he also has like lots of meditations you can do on YouTube and I did them the other day I'll link one of those and actually this book we haven't got it yet but it's got a CD in the back of the meditations so we should try them as well right. he is wonderful just listening I really to like him, him just you can immediately feel your body kind of relaxing <laughs> into what he says yeah he is I really like him so yeah um, so yeah, I mean, likewise, I would probably say like the Ram Dass book and Grist for the Mill has been maybe like my favourite read, but I felt like it was quite sort of similar to that one, mm. and I've mentioned it before. So I just wanted to mention um, this one, Acts of Infidelity by Lena Anderson, 
which was my biggest surprise read that, um, and I loved it. I thought it was brilliantly written. Um, it's basically the story of a kind of a, an affair that's kind of um, with uh, this this character um, Esther Nilsson has with a married man, an actor, and kind of the the heartbreak and hardships and longing and all of the things that go in to like that kind of situation. I guess it just felt really real. It had kind of real wry sort of sense of humour to it. And I only discovered midway through it that it's not really a sequel, but it's kind of a second book with that this character in it. And her first was um, Willful Disregard, which I've I've ordered for myself because I really loved this one and I kind of wanted to read more by her. And it would be quite nice to pick up the same character and do it the wrong way around. Because it does occasionally mention a previous affair or relationship that this character's had. So I think that's what the other book is about. Um, but yeah, it was just that kind of gut-wrenching but sort of slightly funny, but also, yeah, just that sort of almost endless kind of repetition of these um, bad decisions and going back into this relationship and then pulling away and then going back and constant trying to interpret what the other person is saying and, yeah, just the whole balance of power. And I just thought it was really well written. I loved it. I really agree with what Lena Dunham said on the back, that it sort of gripped her like an airport read. So it felt like yeah like really compulsive read but at the same time like you know literary well-written kind of book um so yeah highly recommend translated by saskia vogel translated by saskia, saskia vogel yeah. look what i've just found out that my green matches that green mm, kind of. and then the I yellow matches that one. Oh my gosh i know let me find it mm. <laughs> next question um what was your favorite feel-good book Jenny? Um, I usually go for um, In Times of Trouble, although not this time of trouble, but I usually go for teen books or for young adult books. So I picked one that I read fairly recently, which I just was kind of stupid, but I was just all in really for as well, yeah. which is Here We Are Now by Jasmine Varga, or Varga, I'm not sure how you say her surname. And um, this is about a girl who um lives with her her mum it's just her and her mum but then she finds out that her dad is actually this famous rock star and then they kind of um they get in touch and they they kind of begin their relationship really um but the dad is kind of i mean the the title suggests this as well doesn't he? he's kind of kurt cobain yeah but like obviously a much tamer <laughs> kurt, kurt cobain yeah, yeah. But he kind of made me think so. And I really liked that mm. as well. And it sort of made me feel like he was like a bit of a... And I've said this before if you've been watching for a while. But like a kind of Kurt Cobain, Bill Nighy. Mm. When yeah, Bill ideal. Nighy's in that yeah. film where he's a singer. Mm. Is it Love Actually? I or was so. it the... I can't remember. Yeah. Um, Cross, which... Yeah, so mm. I kind of loved the dad in yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And it's... You know those things... Well, I've been reading a lot of them where you know they're stupid. But just like you're... <laughs> you can't yeah, help you wouldn't but want be... them not to be no you yeah. can't help but be swept yeah. along by yeah. um see also my sweet adrena which i'm yeah. currently reading They're giving you joy <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like, uh. like ruby did as well didn't it yeah so for this i always have you know previously said anything by pg woodhouse like so anyone anyone came into the bookshop and you know were saying you know like, i'm buying for someone that's a bit down or you know someone that's in hospital and they just want to you know, sort of a, a book to take their mind off things or anything like that I always recommended PG Woodhouse, and I, I still stand by that. Um, PG Woodhouse is the cure for anything, any any blues. Definitely. Um, but just in the spirit of wanting to say something else, um, I've picked Marble Season by um, Gilbert Hernandez, who um, Gilbert Hernandez is kind of a world-renowned graphic novel artist um, who is well-known for the Love and Rockets series, I think, primarily. Um, but this is a standalone um kind of autobiographical graphic novel. I love the illustrations. It's all kind of just very, almost like 1950s, 1960s, black and white, um, almost kind of, you know, that Peanuts kind of era kind of stuff. And it's just about his own childhood, really. It doesn't sort of say automatically that it's kind of autobiographical, but it's um, it's about the middle child of a big family growing up in a California suburb in, suburbs in the 1960s. And, you know, sort of playing um, Captain America and reading... Um, comic books and um, mar playing marbles and it's just really about that time that particular age um, 
you know, where you're not quite like a a child child, but you're not like an ad, not adolescent yet. So it's that in between age, which he calls marble season, where you're sort of um, doing make believe stuff, but it's kind of got a bit of an edge to it. Um, I just thought it was really kind of sweet, kind of bittersweet, really kind of, I've read it twice. I just really enjoy it. It really cheers me up. It makes me feel nostalgic for childhood. And yeah, highly recommend if you're just after kind of a really lovely, easy graphic novel. It doesn't really have much of a plot. It's very sort of episodic, so it doesn't sort of have a beginning and end. It just kind of covers a season kind of thing in, in, in childhood. And I really like that about it as well. So it sort of seems like ongoing, almost like it could just go on forever. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend I love Gilbert Hernandez. He's so great. The next question is um, book you wish you could buy or borrow from the library. Yeah. Um, I had two, but one of them actually I don't think is out here in the UK, but might be out in America, which is why I'm meeting, which is the new Emily St. John Mandel. Yeah. So I was... It's Glass Hotel, is that what it's called? I feel like it might be. Something like that. <laughs> so I do want to read that one, and I mm. did have it on hold at the library. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then the other one that I really want is Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, which says which is out but seems to be sold out everywhere oh, really? that i've looked yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit of a big book at the moment isn't it and it's meant to be um steel magnolias meets buffy the vampire slayer so it's set in the 90s in the south and it just sounds i'm not yeah. well you'll see i've got another grady hendrix so i'm not i haven't read any yet so i was a little bit oh i don't know if i like it could yeah, be good it could like be awful writing. isn't it so i might read this other one i've got anyway and see if i but enjoy it's like it. all of the tropes you want but it looks yeah. so good yeah so i would like to read that one but it doesn't seem to be available anywhere right. so I, there's two books I, i've been sort of looking at recently so um one that i heard about here on booktube um which is called um we are the wildcats by siobhan vivian where did we see that I mentioned someone mentioned it um quite recently on on a video that we watched um and it's a, a new young adult book, um, and I think it's set over the course of like one night or one day um, in this I think female, all female, like, is it basketball team or some kind of sports team? I'm not sure if it's supernatural or horror-y, but it's kind of got a thriller element to it. It's young adult, it looks really good. Uh, the other book is um, What is the Grass by Mark Doty, and it's um, about Walt Whitman. So I think it's part partially kind of memoir as well as biography so it's kind of mark doty writing about maybe his relationship with the work of Walt Whitman. i really enjoyed that mix yeah i'm hoping that's what it is um it looks really good i think it's just out it's out in hardback um it might be the next book that i go for um yes i'm a big fan of Walt, Walt Whitman so i'd be happy to read more about him as well yeah okay the next bit is um an author you want to shout out Brett mocked me about this one because he yeah. said that I just pick <clears throat> the same authors all the time. But it's Michelle T. Michelle T. <laughs> but I love Michelle T. It might be my favourite writer. Yeah. And I thought I'd mention this book, which is a relatively recent one. I was going to say the most recent, but I'm not sure. I think the other, oh no, the Beyond the Memoir one is more recent. Yes. But this is Modern Tarot, Connecting with Your Higher Self to the Wisdom of the Cards. Um, and it can be used in any deck. And actually, it's a really good, really good. tarot guide, isn't it? Because yeah. um, we've been using it when we pick a card because it's um, just a bit less kind of um, binary as well, which yeah. I think a lot of them are, especially if you're looking at old ones. Mm. So it's got that Michelle T's whole spin on it as well. Yeah. So kind of, you know, coming at it much more of a kind of feminist, queer perspective, yeah. isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I really like it. Michelle T is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me shout her out. Yeah, shout out Michelle T. <laughs> who are you going to shout out? I'm going to shout out um, an author called Deborah Landau, who is a poet and um, I think she's a like journalist as well. Um, this is one of her previous collections called The Last Usable Hour, and it's really, really good. But um, her most recent book is called um, Soft Targets. And whilst I don't own it yet, I have seen her read. It's, I think it's like a, a one long poem. Um, I've seen her read... Um, bits of it out um, I think she read in City Lights or something okay. like that as well um, but she's just an, a brilliant brilliant new poet you know or sort of current poet that's um, writing about our times really well um, so yeah shout out Deborah Landau so now we're on to the Reading Rush TBR ah yeah so there's four prompts so I guess the idea is 
Oh, they haven't really mentioned this, have they? But you could read four books because it goes over four days. Um, we've picked four books, but you could actually just yeah. Um, well, our plan is always them. read a book for each prompt. Yeah. We Although like also that. because reading rush, the one that happens in the summer, is the only kind of readathon I properly do because I find them a bit obsessive and yeah. stressful. Um, where I really try and read a book a day. This time I'm not really going to do that because I know that I'm not. Um, my reading isn't going super well. Oh, right, right, right. She's taking, <laughs> we'll taking the week off work. <laughs> I have taken the week off work. <laughs> so, Shani, what's your book with a house on the cover? So this one I've actually found quite hard. You did, didn't you? Yeah. We d I did have one, but I read it. Yeah. But the one I've got is Bert's one, which I think looks really good, but I'm not sure if it's going to be what I want to read. That's mm -hmm. my only thing with this one, which is The Vet's Daughter by Barbara Commons, and it's got a little house. So it's got three houses. Many. numerous houses yeah. um and you said it's like quite gothic isn't it yeah and also it's blurbed on the back by um sarah waters alan hollinghurst and graham green and sarah waters calls it a gothic masterpiece um and it had ha its darkness its strangeness its humor its sadness its startling images and twists of phrase i think um, she's brilliant like um i've read a few of her books and yeah she's a very kind of very british kind of gothic Writer, I but you know, but also at the same time reminds me of like um Shirley Jackson, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's the like Shirley Jackson thing. that made me, yeah, interested, yeah. So, yeah, possibly this one, it's quite short as well. What have you got for House on the Cover? House on the Cover, I've gone for uh, Margaret Miller, The Listening Walls, because I thought like a nice bit of um crime uh, is usually quite a quick read, and I really like Margaret Miller. I'm trying to get through these kind of reissues of her sort of books from the sort of 50s. Um, and this is the most recent one I've got. It's got someone falling from the window of a house on the cover. Um, I think it's sort of um, set in a hotel in Mexico City. But let's pretend that's in a, a house, not a hotel. It's a hotel's a house, too, for, for many people. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's going to be really good, I think. Um, the next prompt is to read something in the same room the whole time. So, I've got two graphic novels on this pile, and... Both, and these ones you've actually seen quite recently anyway, mm. but I'm going for An Embarrassment of Witches, which is by Sophie Goldstein, and no, so it's Jenna Jordan. It's done in a kind of a uh, bit of a, a gothic script, so it's hard to read. So yeah, graphic novel. It's going to be really quick, and I'll read it lying on the bed, which is my usual yeah. thing now. Yeah. What have you got for that one? Um, I've got a, a poetry, a selected poetry of um, Patrizia Cavalli who's an Italian poet, it's called My Poems Won't Change the World. Love the cover. Um, yeah, one of the truly singular and beloved poets of contemporary Italy. So this spans 1974 to 2006, um, translated by a selection of renowned poets. So, um, yeah, I've not read any Patricia Cavalli before. Um, I think poetry is a good, again, a good a good deal for these uh, read fonts. I always pick poetry for my summer readathon, which is usually right. just my one poetry book I read right. a year. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll uh, yeah. have one for that. And yeah, just I would like to learn more about sort of Italian poetry and Italian um, authors in general. So I don't want to do that one. The next one is a book set somewhere you wish you could go. Um, so so you got a good this. Yes, I've got um, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So I wish I could go to the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not do an exorcism no but maybe like, well that scares me right so yeah maybe just hear about an exorcism right, okay from some cool kids mm. but not actually be involved right um yeah set in the 80s pa it says it packs all the magic of a summer horror flick so and the cover is so good and it looks so good with yeah, nails, if, so. if he pulls it off properly it could yeah. be amazing isn't it? Like yeah if, if, you, if it's what you want it to be because i've kind of been interested in buying it for a yeah. while but i just didn't know if it was going to quite work no me too yeah i want to i want to read it too yeah so yeah great and also we've been watching lots of 80s kind of slashery films recently as well yeah so I think that'll sort of yeah as well as like those. only reading horror i only want to watch it Hor as well. watch horror, yeah. <laughs> what have you got um, for that one so what's this one? somewhere, somewhere you wish you, you could, go. could go so i thought i'd get around to reading wild harbour i think because it's about um two people who are committed pacifists who retreat from their home to the remote highlands of Scotland, which is where I want to go. Oh, uh, okay. The remote highlands of Scotland. Um, they want to sort of basically become like self-sufficient and have a, like a rural life. 
out in the wilderness um, because they sense that there's a, this kind of war coming coming in or gonna, th that's going to ha happen. Um, and it does sort of the war, this war comes in and starts to infiltrate into their lives. Um, but it's a speculative sort of science fiction novel from 1936. It's a Scottish novel and it sort of um, predicted the uh, three years ahead of the outbreak of the Second World War in Europe. So I just found that kind of really interesting and kind of had like sort of similar sort of um, links to to now, this kind of on incoming sort of outbreak. Um, yeah, that sounds really fascinating. I'm quite interested in this British Library Science Fiction Classics series as well. Um, finally, a book to make you smile. I've got Mooncakes by Moon Wendy Cakes. Zoo and Suzanne Walker. It says it's spellbinding. It looks super cute. Um, Tilly Walden, who wrote Spinning, and on the Sunbeam said that it had everything I love in a story. Magic that felt inventive, characters that became my friends, and a romance that felt truly authentic. So that sounds really cute. I think you can do these in four days. Well, possibly. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely do two of the graphic novels, can't I, if mm -hmm. nothing else? And what's your one um, to make you smile? I don't really have one. Um, so I've just kind of picked a book that I want to read, which it won't make me depressed, hopefully. Yeah. But then it might make me depressed. Oh. Um, but the cover makes you smile. Exactly. Um, it's got, like, little domes on it. So, From the Legend of Beale, and this is by Mary Staten, or Staten. Um, from what I can tell, it's the only book I can find by her that she wrote. Um... And yeah, it's kind of recent recent discovery, secondhand in Troutmark, of science fiction um, from the seventies, and it looks to be quite experimental. So it's got like lots of um, sort of playing with text and stuff like that. So whether or not that will make me smile or make me <laughs> cry, um, we've yet to see. But I just think it sounds really interesting. So it's about. Um, um, the story of a probe team from Earth and its exploration of M6, MC6, seemingly empty paradisical world dominated by the scattered complexes of geometrical forms and domes of an advanced intelligence. I do love domes. Yeah, so it's kind of them sort of making discoveries on this planet, which seems to have been like at one point inhabited. It just sounds really cool. Um, I might change, you know, if. if if I'm I, struggling through you, these Yours books. are quite big, for I don't yeah. think you'd be able to read them in four days. No, so this one might be a hold off. Okay. Um, and if I get depressed reading the other ones, I will probably find myself just something really cheery, maybe a graphic novel to read um, to make me smile. And that's the end. That's it. So, um, if you're doing it, maybe link your, if you've done this video, maybe link your video mm. in the description yes. so we can go and watch it. Or yeah. if you've got a TBR and you're not on... Um, don't have a book to channel, maybe list your TBR. Yeah, because Reading Rush is always a really good way of us finding new channels to yeah, watch as well, isn't yeah. it? Oh, we're going to do a daily vlog for each of yeah. the days. So it's Thursday yeah. to Sunday. Yeah. I can't remember what those days are. Is it like 16th or something? So, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So we'll do daily vlogs. Yeah.